All right then. So just before I start talking about poker, I just want to say straight up that I don't advise gambling. It's not a very good thing to get into, really. You're just tipping your money down the drain, really. Uh, so yeah, don't gamble. I just play poker for fun. So yeah, let's get into it. Right then. So how you start off with poker? You have your poker deck, whatever you know. This is the order of the cards that they go in. Obviously, um, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Jack, Queen, King, Ace. Don't worry about the symbols on the cards at the moment. But so that that's like the um the worth. You know that that's Ace is the highest card all the way down to two, which is the lowest card. Okay. So that's the first thing you got to keep in mind. Right then, so first things first in a poker game. So whoever, you know, you can usually people choose to deal by just picking random cards and then the person with the highest cards deals first or you can just, just whatever, just deal. So the way to deal is you pass one card to one person, other card to another person, another card, another card. Then basically everyone ends up with two cards. And that's your hand, those two cards. You also want to shuffle the cards to make sure, you know, obviously, unless you're a total scumbag, you're not cheating. But you want everyone around you to think you're not cheating. And you know you're not cheating. So just shuffle them a bit. I know I shuffle like a total moron, but, you know, just shuffle them. Do whatever. So next we're going to look into how, you know, you win the poker game and what you're looking for to win the certain hand. So, yeah. Um, to win a poker game, you have to knock every other person out. So you have to bust every other player. And um, you do that by getting the right hand. So yeah, the first thing, the the least effective hand, um, which it essentially is nothing, but it's just a high card. So if no one's got any other hand, you've just got a high card, you know. So just as a heads up, these are all the hands that you're looking for, but I'll explain in what they all mean. So yeah. So a high card is like, say if no one's, like I say, I'll get into what they all mean, but say if no one's got a pair, three of a kind, any of that stuff, if no one's got any other hand, you know, no other hands like pairs, three of a kind, um, straight, raw flush, whatever, um, uh, say if like, you've got an ace and that's all you've got, no, there's no there's no other aces, there's no two pair, there's no nothing, you haven't got an ace douche, you haven't got a treble ace, whatever, you know, um, you've you've won because you've got an ace, that's the high card, if no one else has got anything, so that's how it works, but if you've got a king, that's the second highest card, so remember the orders I went in, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, jack, queen, king, ace, the highest card will win, the high card will win, the lower card loses, if you've got nothing else. In the poker rankings, the next best thing you can get, so if you've got a high card, but someone's got this, a pair, a pair of anything, it doesn't matter what symbol it is, um, if you've got a pair on, you've got something in your hand, so you've got a three in your hand, then on the table, there's a, another three, that's a pair. If someone's got a king or a nine or what, anything above a three, you know, anything higher than a three, then their pair's better than your pair. So that's how a pair works. Pretty simple, isn't it? Then after this, it's two pair. So one pair, so say if you've got, Three and a four, and there's a three and a four on the table, and something else, a three and the four, that's two pair. And you know, yeah, easy stuff again, two pair. It's just one card and another card. You've got two pairs of it. That's how it works. So then after that, it's three of a kind. So three of a kind is three cards. The higher the card, the higher the three of the kind is, the better you do. So the best way you can get a three of a kind is if you've got. A pair of anything, a pair of sevens, and a seven pops up on the table. Brilliant. If you've got one seven and two sevens come up, brilliant. That's a three of a kind. Any three, three of a card, okay? Treble of the card. Just remember that. Next is a straight. So a straight would be two, three, four, five, six. Three, four, five, six, seven. Um, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, seven, eight, nine, ten. Jack. Eight. Nine, ten. Jack. Queen. Nine, ten. Jack. 
queen king 10 jack queen king ace I, I reckon i botched and got some wrong there but i don't care that's how a straight is if you've got the cards in order so if you've got a two and a three and a four five six pop up or obviously five cards do end up getting put down so you know if you've got a two and a, a three four five six seven pop up boom but that's pretty low that card is so Probably shouldn't raise for that one. I will get into raising, checking and folding later, by the way. And then, after the straight, is a flush. So, this is when the symbols do come into play. So, a flush. Look at the symbols, okay? So, you've got diamonds, hearts, um, jacks, spades and clubs. They're the symbols on the cards. Okay? So you got uh seven and an eight with diamonds on them, and there's three cards with diamonds on the table, or four cards, or somehow five cards, but that rarely happens. Basically, the minimum you're looking for is three cards with the same symbol on the table, but that like like I say, this is a very hard hand to get. And the maximum, obviously, where you're looking for hopefully they've all got <laughs> those symbols on the table. Um so yeah, that's the fifth highest hand so yeah the fourth highest hand which it's really like unexpected this hand like you can just get it out of nowhere like i thought oh, i've got my mate beat i've got my mate beat yes yes i've got a straight it's the final hand yes i can beat him he's gone all in then he's ended up with a full house so yeah with a full house it, it shows even like the lowest hand can make you win the whole game so if you've got two and a three, then a two and a three come up on the table. That's a two pair. But then, say if another two or another three come up, then you've got a full house. And most of the time, if you've got a full house, you've essentially won the game. Unless someone's got a four of a kind, which can happen, but rarely happens. So yeah, you know, that's like, like I say. But obviously, it depends what point you're at in the game, whether you want to go in with every single hand. If you've got a two and a three, you know... If you at the start of the game, obviously, unless someone raises at the start, keep going in. But um, yeah, if you're really low and you're the last person, maybe just fold anyway. You know, you don't know what cards come up if you've got a two and a three. You think, oh, lowest hand might as well fold. I know hands really don't matter in reality, but if you've got a high hand, more chance of you winning if someone else has got the same um type of hand than you as you. Like if they've ended up with a pair of sevens and you've got a pair of tens, you've won. You know, so yeah. Alright then, so the next one is very, very self-explanatory. Four of a kind, so four of anything. This hand is uh, fairly rare though, most of the time. Uh, if you've got two sevens and then two sevens pop up on the table somehow or more. Obviously, by the way, more than them. Um, if you've got more than two, you know, if you had like three sevens on the table. It, it isn't like a five of a kind or anything, it only goes up to four. So yeah, four of a kind, um, good stuff, you know. That's like the third highest one. That's, that's one that is most likely to happen now the next two hands the two highest hands i've never had and i've been playing poker since since like the summer of 2017 so you know i haven't done it loads and loads i'm not amazed at it but i've been playing it since then you know so so the second highest hand is a straight flush so remember i was talking about symbols earlier diamonds clubs spades hearts so yeah focus on the symbols this time but these are a massive rarity like so i've never had these i've never had this in a hand before so say if you've got um two diamonds, um so you've got um a nine and a ten of diamonds, and then eight, seven diamonds and jack diamonds pop up. You know, they're three they're the three of the five cards that have been put down on the table. Um yeah, you've basically got it, you've won, go all in because no one's gonna be that hand. You've won. Okay, don't go all in, raise it a bit, you know, you know what I mean? So yeah. You've essentially won. Um, I don't think there's been... There's probably been barely any games ever um, that you wouldn't win in that situation. Barely ever. It's a possibility that you wouldn't win, but rarely. Like, don't know if it's ever happened, to be fair. Because uh, the only hand that can beat it is the next hand, and it's very similar. So, yeah. The highest hand in poker is called a Royal Flush. So, for this one, you have to specifically... Have in your hand um, any of these, so 10, jack, king, queen, ace, and they all have to be the same suit, so the same symbol. So diamond, spade, club, or heart. 
they all have to be the same symbol. I mean, it's absolutely insane. I was really close to getting one once, but didn't pull it off, sadly. But that is the highest one. A raise go all in with that shit, you know, just go for it, to be honest, because that's the highest hand, you know, but it's a rarity. I think it's something like a one in 700,000 hands that you're going to get that. So, you know, yeah. All right, then. So now that we got all the hands out of the way, this is how you play poker. So, like I said earlier, all the cards are dealt out. Every person's got two each. And you look at your cards then, um, whoever the dealer is says, all right, then, what do you want to do? Raise, check, or fold. To check, you um, tap your, if you don't want to say anything, tap your um, knuckles on the ground two times, or not on the ground, on the table, or whatever, so on the wood. Knock, knock. So, yeah, that's checking, or you just say, I'm going to check. Um, there's one, there's one, per pardon me, there's one person who has to put the chips in, so they're the person who uh, puts the 100 chips in, all the 50 chips in, or whatever you want, however you play. So, yeah, they call it, but everyone else has to check. Um, I'm pretty sure the dealer's the one who puts them in, whoever's dealing. I don't know, I don't know. So, yeah, I'm not too, like, um, I'm not too much of an expert on that sort of stuff. So, yeah, um, that happens. If someone raises, though, Every other person has to meet their raise. Now, if you want to raise higher than them, so say um, they raise a hundred, or they raise a thousand, however many chips you have, they raise a thousand. You either have to meet their raise, so you have to put a thousand in, or you fold, or you um, you double it. So they raise thousand. You want to double it two thousand, or you can go over doubling it. So if they raise twenty, you can raise forty or above. So yeah. Um, that's it really that's how you deal with it so then one card gets put down that once all that's happened then so this is the um, the flop then three cards face up you look at what cards you've got see if you've got any of the ten, ten types of hands you need and uh, if you've got anything then you know you can rise a bit if you haven't then check or if they raise and you haven't got anything fold so yeah then the next thing to do is, like, okay, so you've got the three cards on the table. Then another, then the dealer will ask you, um, raise, check, or fold. And you can, like I say, raise it again, check, or you can fold if you've got nothing. If no one raises, I 100% advise checking. That's the most logical thing to do. Why fold if all you're doing is checking? If everyone's checking, no one's clearly got anything. So you could clearly have a high card or a pair or like a lower hand and you could clearly be winning something. Uh, usually people tend to be raising if they're either bluffing or they've got a three of a kind or above. That's what they usually tend to do. Um, to be honest, bluffing's okay, but like you're going to lose the game. You know, or you might not. It depends how you play, really. We'll go into play styles in a second. But... Um, yeah, so what happens is next everyone's raised, checked or fold, then raise, check or fold one last time when another card gets put down. So there's five cards on the table. You've all got your two cards there and you're all looking at your two cards, seeing if, you, if you've got anything. All right, so if everyone checks then cards down, then whoever's whatever, you know, whatever anyone's got, the person who wins, wins. So that's that. All right, then. So with playing styles, uh, you can play in many different ways if you want. You know, you can keep raising and keep bluffing or whatever. Uh, obviously, there's really cheap ways to play, like constantly going all in, and there's a 50-50 chance if you'll win anything. The problem is, people usually tend to get agitated if someone keeps going all in, but it's not illegal, but they're like, oh, for fuck's sake, you only keep winning because you're going all in, but yeah, you're also going all in, so it's sort of a mental game. I personally don't do that. Another decent strategy is um, depending on what point you're in at you're in the game. So if you've got the most chips, um, probably not best to fold all the time. Maybe see what hand you've got. Or obviously, if they're raised by loads, fold, fold unless you've got something decent or there's something decent on the table. Um, if you've got a decent hand, you could raise a bit, but people might be suspicious or fold, or people might call it, and then there's nothing on the table. So it's best to see what three cards come down first. But if someone raises a bit and you've got a decent hand, they might as well go for it, you know. Even though they could have something decent as well. Because usually people people don't tend to bluff in those situations because it's less believable. People tend to bluff when the three cards are down and there could be something good. 
But um, yeah, another big problem with bluffing is that you know people might be able to suss that out. But it depends how you play. If you fold loads, then they think all right, you fold. But then you raise a bit, then people fold, and you, you haven't got anything, you know. <clears throat> but like I say, all this really depends in what position you're in the game. If you got the most chips, the least amount of chips, you know. If you got loads of chips, why not bluff a bit for a laugh? Get more of the pot, keep getting the pot, people folding, whatever. You know, but if you lower down and you haven't got such a massive lead or, you know, it's close between who's got the most chips, then, you know, probably best not to bluff, probably best to just go in when you've actually got something. But if you actually have got something, don't make it blatantly obvious. If you've actually got, don't raise loads and loads and loads because people are just going to fold. I suppose you can bluff by doing that, but don't do it too much because people will just suss you out and then be able to find out how you're playing or how much you're bluffing or whatever. It's best to just mix stuff up at the end of the day. Uh, yeah, so with chips and all that, I don't really know the value of them, so I'll just put it up right now um, on the screen. So, yeah, um, I don't actually play with proper chips for the most part. I have a little bit once in a while, but uh, I usually play with my mates at the pub. And obviously we're not playing for money and pubs don't allow gambling, so you know. Yeah. I play with this app. This is not paid promotion by the way. I play with this app with this app called Virtual Chips. So what you do is you type in the names and whatever and then you put how many chips they've got on, then you click start game and you can call raise and fold. Yeah, obviously one I do it for all my friends because it's on my phone and I say what do you want to do? Obviously, sometimes I make mistakes and what have you on there and accidentally press the wrong thing, but I'm not cheating, but like, you know, it's just for a bit of a laugh at the end of the day. It's just, we're not playing for actual money, so, you know, it's all good in the neighbourhood at the end of the day. Yeah. So, um, there was one more thing. Oh, yeah. I have been rambling a bit on this video. So, if this video hasn't helped you at all, download Prominence Poker. On Xbox One, it's for free. I have no idea if it's on the PS4. But yeah, get Prominence Poker, free game, and just keep trying to play or do the tutorial on that game because that teaches you how to play poker. It's so hard to teach people to play poker. I remember I first got Prominence Poker because that's how I originally learned. And my mates were teaching me, and I was just like, oh, that it was so hard. I didn't know what I was doing. But I eventually picked it up by constantly playing, and I kept playing and kept playing and kept playing. And the key is, don't get impatient with people if you try and teach them. And um, just try and, you know, just try and understand that. Were you decent when you first played? No, like, calm down, you know. This is how to play Texas Hold'em, by the way. I know there's different type. There's another type of poker where you have five cards and you pick one off the table. I don't know how to play that. Um, there's this card game called Bullshit where, well, you, you someone says, oh, these are two fives. Are they? No, bullshit. Oh, they are. Oh, then they, that person gets all the cards. There's another one called Chase the Ace where the person with the ace loses, I think, that, and you have to pick someone's card off or something. So, yeah, um, I don't know how to play them that well, really. Uh, so, yeah, uh, hopefully this video has helped you a bit learn, taught you how to play poker to a decent standard. To be honest, um, I'm trying to think if I've left anything out. There's um, some, like, there's the, um, the blinds at the start. They go up every so often. So instead of calling 10, you put you put 20 in instead. One person puts um, so much in, the other puts so much. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention. I think one person puts, like, 100 in, then another person puts 50 in. Like, they put half of it in or something, and then the blinds go up or um, what else. The reason why that's done, it's done to, if people keep folding, then they're actually losing something and the other person's gaining for not folding. Um, yeah. I'm really trying to think, to be honest, what else have I missed? There's some poker jargon that I mentioned in there, which I didn't explain, like deuce, treble. Well, that means double and triple. So, yeah. But, yeah, as I say, this is essentially, you know, just been me rambling for ages. But hopefully it's taught you something. Thanks for watching and see ya. By the way, I just want to add what I said at the start of the video about don't gamble, don't gamble. If you are going to gamble, obviously just do it for fun, you know. I was just saying that at the start just because, I don't know, just said it, in it. So, yeah. Just, you know, if you are going to gamble, just go in with the intent, all right, I'm going to lose this money, it's whatever, I'm just doing this for a bit of a laugh, just, if you're going to gamble five quid a while, ten quid, you think, just think I've probably lost this money, it's whatever at the end of the day, so yeah, just wanted to add that.